Now, Who Be Gone is a brand that has been around for a tremendously long amount of time. The brand was actually established in Paris. It's a Parisian brand in 1775 by Jean-Francois Who Be Gone. Here we have a fragrance that came out just last year in 2022. If you are a fan of spicy, fruity fragrances, this one is a real treat. This one is called Fig Noir. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on the new fragrance Fig Noir by Hubigan and I give you my thoughts regarding the smell, the performance, comparisons, longevity, all that good stuff. I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel it would really mean a lot to me and I upload on a daily basis. And of course give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or simply if you took something of value from today's episode if you learned anything it would really mean a lot to me and it also tells YouTube that you like this type of content so you'll end up seeing more of it in your feed now of course this is an amazing brand and I have tried a number of their fragrances Fougere Royale of course gets a tremendous amount of praise it's so popular and I have so many friends here on the platform who rant and rave about it here we have Fig Noir now of course Fig is a fantasy note in fragrances and this fragrance has fig leaf and the actual fig fruit in it so you can expect it to be a little herbal and earthy but you can also expect it to be a little bit lactonic and fruity at the same time now it does have noir in the name so noir means black or dark so is it going to have some dark ingredients in here for sure there's black pepper there's cardamom there's cedar wood and a lot of that is subjective right so some ingredients could come across smelling quite dark depending on what your taste in fragrances is nevertheless i love this fragrance this one is composed by celine elena amazing perfumer i've tried a number of her works in the past i'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell let's take a quick look at the presentation So now, of course, it kind of goes without saying that if you love fig-based fragrances, you absolutely must own this fragrance. I personally know a lot of other fig-based fragrances. I own a number of them in my collection. I don't need to go through the laundry list of what they are, but it's, a, it's an ingredient that is very sort of nostalgic for me. And I say that because I spent many years living in Athens, Greece. I am of Greek descent, and I actually did have a couple of fig trees in my backyard when I lived in Athens. And I always remember the smell and the sensation of cutting open into one and consuming it after rinsing it in the sink and it's a beautiful and delicious fruit and this fragrance really conjures up those positive memories for me so I do have a very sort of personal attachment to this fragrance and other fig based fragrances if I'm being honest but there's something really interesting about this one and it's the inclusion of all that spice now in my personal experience I found that a lot of fig based fragrances are usually accompanied by other sweet notes and some gourmand notes and that's not necessarily the case with this one because it does have noir in the designation so the first spice that I got right off the bat was cardamom it opened with a lot of cardamom and I said uh oh there's something alongside that fig in here and this was prior to me looking at any note breakdown and I suppose it's because it did kind of remind me a little bit of like changing constants by Penhaligon's minus the sweetness of course so I said oh okay this is a nice dose of cardamom that we're getting in here and then I looked at the note breakdown subsequent to that and I noticed that there was black pepper in here as well and I'm like oh yeah it does kind of have like a little bit of a peppery personality to it too and so that peppery sort of cardamom introduction is a really nice compliment to the fig and the fig that's in here is not overly lactonic which is a great thing it is a little bit herbal so it does have a little bit of that fig leaf note in here something akin to what you would expect in Marc Jacobs for men which was a clear rectangular bottle with a big black cap and so you do have a lot of other fig based fragrances on the market despite the fact that it's a fantasy note and you know it doesn't get interpreted too commonly or at least not as commonly as some other ingredients out there due to ease of access or you know personal decisions or whatever but this one is beautiful 
beautifully done. You have the patchouli and the dry down combining with the cedar wood and kind of gives it that long lasting earthy touch that I think is well deserved in a fragrance like this. This is a fruity spicy fragrance with longevity. This is a fragrance that not only comes across smelling very masculine and sophisticated and refined, but it also has a little bit of this quirky personality in there where you know it's not just a peppery woodsy scent. That's been overdone as well. A lot of old school masculine fragrances, especially if they wanted to sort of veer away from that overdose or that influx of like fir balsam and oak moss and whatever, they kind of went into more of a woodsy territory because that's the other foolproof masculine vibe, if you will, right? Woodsy and spicy. But I like that this one kind of breaks it apart with, you know, the fig that's in here. And in the words of the perfumer, she said, and this is not being quoted verbatim, of course, but she said something to the effect of, you know, this is kind of an expression for men who like to be kind of laconic and curt and brief with their expressions. And so, you know, for men who don't say too much, but they want to convey a certain aspect of their personality, I think this is awesome. I am personally really, really enjoying this one. And at times it kind of reminds me of Atelier Cologne's fig. It's that kind of like a fresh fruity, yet also like deeply rooted, earthy, masculine, like grounding perfume. It is beautiful, super high quality, very long lasting, gorgeous expression. And it just shows me that I need to get a lot more fragrances from the brand Who Be Gone, because surprisingly, this is the first time I'm ever reviewing a fragrance from this brand on my channel. I look forward to reviewing a lot more in the weeks and months to come. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, sure, it goes without saying that this is a unique fragrance. There's a lot of fig-based fragrances out there. Purple Fig by Wilhelm or Philosikos by Diptyque. And like I said, I'm not going to go through the laundry list of fig fragrances that I own, but this is a beautiful fragrance. I love that spicy cardamom, black pepper, and cedarwood personality that it has. In the heart, you also have this interplay between jasmine and iris. Iris gives off a lipsticky vibe, not in this fragrance. Jasmine is very clean and serene, not in this fragrance because of the spice. So I kind of refrain from talking about those two ingredients because I didn't feel they were as prominent as the cardamom and the fig, of course. In terms of longevity, 10 plus hours, it's done quite beautifully. So the projection was really good for the first hour to hour and a half of application. It did radiate within an arm's length, not beyond, and it actually stayed like that for a couple hours. It became an elbows length scent right around hour seven, seven and a half. It became a skin scent right around hour 10. If you spray on clothing, you're going to get performance that goes way beyond that, as is evidenced by my personal experiences. In terms of the versatility, perfectly unisex, although some people would argue this one is masculine leaning on account of the woods and the spices. And, you know, certainly in the words of the perfumer, it kind of made it sound like it was a masculine expression to begin with. But if you're a woman who likes cedar wood and fig, why not? This is perfect for formal occasions, but if you have the coin to afford it, you can wear it casually as well. The performance makes it a really good fit for the colder weather, but the notes, especially the fig and the iris and the jasmine, make it a really good fit for the hotter weather as well. I probably just wouldn't wear it in the dead of summer. And in terms of the presentation, it's so elegant, so classy, timeless, masculine, very much like some of their other fragrances. My final verdict on this fragrance is it's one of my favorite fig-based fragrances that I own. I think it's beautifully done. It is unique. It goes in a different direction from other fig-based fragrances. It didn't focus solely on the fig, which can sometimes turn a fragrance into kind of a novelty scent if that's all they're thinking about. This one actually gives you some depth and complexity, and it is very much so appreciated. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this review of Fig Noir by Hubigon. If you do own this fragrance, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below, or if you have another favorite from this brand. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Once again, the brand has a lot of fragrances. They've been around since 1775. So of course, it's kind of to be expected with such a rich history and legacy that they would have more than just a dozen fragrances, right? Leave your comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, hit the bell and give it a thumbs up. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.